Hello and welcome to this video about state control in Touch Designer. For the last some time, I've been working hard on creating a system to do state control in Touch Designer, but in a very visual and organized way. And I think I came up with something very cool, which can help a lot with creating stable systems where you explicitly describe the way it's allowed to behave. And then the systems make sure it only behaves in that way. It works with only these blocks. And I'll first show you some examples of how it's implemented so you can get a feel of maybe if it's useful for you. So the first example is this guy. As you can see, all the state comps have this parameter, which is the state. And there are all the states that are possible. So you can force them into the state. If you open it, you can see a network example. These networks exist of these three blocks. You have states, you have conditions, and you have enhancers. I'll explain what they are later, but you can first see how it, how it reacts. So I'm normally in the walk state, which is just the walk animation. If you press one, then this condition becomes true and it will go into the run state because it always wants to flow. And if I release, that's this uh, condition listening to that, then it will go back to walk. If I'm in the walk state and I press two, then this condition is met and it will go into rollover. And the only way to get out of rollover is with this timer. So. As long as it's in this condition, I can press and do whatever I want, but it will react the way I expect because the only way to get out is through this timer and the timer is, is counting down. So, um, And if you're in run and you press two, then you go to jump. So the inputs can mean something else in different states. Each state has a different context, you might say. So you are deliberately describing the way the state should behave and flow. Uh, and you can even force it into a state, for example, jump. This is just referencing the parent state parameter. And then it'll just behave like you expect. And that's what the system is very good for. It's good for dealing with the messy outside world with unexpected behavior, inputs, and things that you might not know would happen. And make sure that everything stays in this loop and stays consistent to what you want. And you can see how flexible the system is if I, for example, just change this name to die then it'll play the die animation because the, whole, the states are based on the names of these comps. It's very native to Touch Designer. I can also do a uh, kick, and you'll kick. Wow. <laughs> so here's another little example. This one has a bit more chops and tops. So as you can see, it's the same simple circuit I built with three states. The three states are, it can be off, it can be on if I press one, and if I release it, go back to off. And then it can be count, which is just one frame trigger. And these two conditions make sure it doesn't repeat and it goes into count one time. And if I keep pressing, the number will go up. And here you start to see the first ways to implement the circuit into some chops and tops. Here are some constants which call this function. And here as well, it's referencing off and giving a pulse. And here as well, it's uh, referencing on. And those together just simply make the behavior. And this sound as well is just triggering on, on the count state. So you can see how the behavior is very clearly described. It should behave in this way and then everything can be modeled around that. And then as a the last little example, I have some real scrolling. This is just because it's a popular format. <laughs> and this might seem a bit much, but in the center you have the same circuit describing the way it should behave. So you have it on the reel, then you have mouse down on here, which will go into dragging. And if you release mouse up, then it will go into transition. And that's all the input behavior there is. And then everything else is reacting to that. So it's animating to the new thing, it's changing to the new image and using the triggers. So, uh, and it's predictable because you know it's going to behave like this. You can even probably force it into transitioning. Ah, and it'll do this. I didn't know. <laughs> you can move it up. I don't know. So, yeah, it becomes very stable. So, you might ask, how do I use this magnificent? Um, well, these are the blocks uh, which make it happen. And if you take a look in them, it, it's actually very simple. Uh, I'm not going to go in them now, but after, at the end of the video, I will put a portion where I explain how the system functions. Uh, but you don't have to watch that because you don't need to know that to use the system. So how do you use the system? Um, well, you only need these two blocks, 
the, these two are enough to make uh, the networks. Uh, states represent the state uh, a system can be in. And the parent, because the system works with a menu which represents uh, the state it's in now, the parent just looks for all the state comps. Because the state comps have a tag called state and the parent uh, just has this expression where it looks for all the children with the tag state. That's it. So it's a menu with all the names of the comps, the tag state. So if you have two states and you put one into one and the other into the other, then you get this. You, it's just going to loop infinitely because they all always want to go to the next state if it's possible. Uh, so that's not really valuable. So we have these conditions which you can put in between to block the flow. So uh, if I now also create this loop, uh, it wants to go through, but it stops because this condition isn't met. And that's what conditions are. They are just like a state, but they have a uh, progression bar. And if that's one, then the flow can go through. Um, and the, it's a bar because then you can visualize something which, with progression like loading or a timer, uh, but that's purely visual. Um, you can change the direction of these, uh, these things so it makes sense for your network, so it can, they can be omni, 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 omnidirectional. Um, and they have some smaller uh, functionality. The most important one is the enhancer functionality. It's simply uh, a block you can attach uh, to this parameter, which will leach on to the uh, progression. So it's referencing the enhancer, uh, this one, the timer, and then the progression value, which is just a parameter on that one. And uh, then you get some pre-made functionality. So if this one becomes active for the first time, like so, um, then the timer will run and it'll wait until it goes through again. You can also, for example, have a button in between. So if you don't want these to go instantly, you can, oh wait, you can use a condition, which this goes into, that goes to that one, and then um, an enhancer. And this one just does uh, keyboard input. Let's point it up. Oh. So now it's gonna lo it's gonna go down, and then it'll stick in uh, state two. I wait for this condition, which is input, and then it'll go through again. So that's how you build up these systems. It's just these two blocks connecting with each other, conditions uh, to block the flow, and then enhancers to give the conditions some functionality. But you can of course always uh, a simple example is keyboard in uh, just do a, a, a statement here. So you can write some logic like, uh, if I delete this enhancer, like, oh, uh, operator uh, rectangle, uh, dot, bar dot, size C, or X, I mean, is bigger than uh, two or something. Yeah, we don't have the operator. So then condition is a thing in the state itself. They also have these fun little uh, toggles, which you can use. One is uh, making it sticky. You can see the visuals change. Uh, if it's sticky, then it'll just behave like normal until it's one. And it'll stay at one until the parent becomes active and inactive again. This feels maybe a bit complicated. But as you can see, it went through twice now. But um, uh, one other way to connect them if you want is through these. Um, this just creates a reference. I think it's, it can be visually nice, especially if you put a background, which is white. Oh. And then you can see these lines, but you see it, it draws and this one and this line. Uh, if you want, it can be, it can be quite aesthetic, but it can, if you create a loop, it can break the system because touches center isn't made for using these things. So it's always more stable to use this, uh, and don't, and don't use these lines. And you can, of course, have two states go into one condition, for example. But if you do it through the parameter, like so, uh, it'll overwrite the other one. Uh, so you just type it. So you type uh, state one as well. And then you have multiple. And it'll give this annoying warning, but you can just ignore it because it doesn't know this path. Because I don't think there is a parameter which can reference multiple comps. 
but uh, yeah, can't work around that. Okay, so now you might ask, I uh, if I create this circuit, how do I use it in my project? Good to know maybe is that the only way to get into the circuit is by forcing it through the parent parameter. Because if the circuit is self-contained, then there's no way to get in because it needs to follow the logic. So you can force it and then you are in the circuit. You have a few ways to reference the parent. Of course, you can always just do a Python expression which looks at the parent. But I've created in this uh, little script some functions which help you uh, do that. Um, this is an extension. So you can, for example, do a constant job which uh, can look at, for example, is in state uh, one, or it's maybe better to do like start and, and end. So is end, and then you can uh, name this maybe as well. It's nice to do. You can do parent dot is state, state end. And then this will be true when it's end and it will be false when it's not. So you can see now it's end, when it's timer is done, it's not. Uh, you can also make it a if the pulse. So it only pulse once when it's end and not when it's start. What you can also do is just plug in as many ones as you want and start and however many you want. So now it's always true because that's, those are the only states except for that one. Um, or you can even do um, last state is start. So then only when it comes from start, it's true. Uh, and uh, otherwise not. So there you can get the value uh, like triggers for state changes or another way to do it is through switches. Um, for example, a top switch. If you have two inputs, like a circle and a rectangle, plug them in, uh, and you use a table, then you can align the names of the states with uh, the switch uh, index. That makes sense. So for example, start is the first one, and end is the last one. And here you can do this expression. Uh, parent dot state li list to index and if you here reference the table and grab the first column with the names then uh, you can see if it's start it'll grab the first index and if it's end the state then it'll grab the second index so that way you can do switches and you can get values in and that's uh, mostly enough um, and there you can always find your own ways to interact with the state parameter, of course. You also have these uh, extras, which are just very simple things to make some extra possibilities. Uh, this one just has an active toggle. So if you drag this onto a state, it's always active. Um, and you have this one where you can put in some inputs and then it will see if all of them are true. Because normally only one of them needs to be true. But if you, for example, want multiple conditions to be true before a state can be entered, then you can use this one. And you can do things like this. So this is uh, a score ladder and it is not in a loop, but they're freestanding. And they're all using this always on, so their input is always on. So now as you can see, you have a score ladder. The higher the number goes, the higher the score. And you can just, if you want, drop down an OP viewer and just do this, parent OP state. That's an expression. And then you're getting the state which is met. So if you put in a graphic here like a circle, and if you then get the highest score, then ah, doesn't. Then you'll get a circle in OP viewer. So you can also reference it that way. So if you want, you can download this in the link in the description and try it out for yourself. So I think um, it can even just be inspiring to play around with because it's. I think quite a different way maybe to interact with the Touchy Center network. And I'm very excited to see if uh, what people can do with it, if there are other things maybe I didn't think about or uh, how this, if this does make sense for people. For me in my projects, I do a lot of interactivity and a lot of things connecting with each other. I want people to be 
be able to be very messy and i think this helps me structure and visualize the code a lot better um, but i really try to make it very approachable and all these parameters have helps written so you can uh, always look at them what they do and if you have any questions you can always ask me if you want um, and uh, i'm gonna try to make it as clean as possible publish it, publish it uh, and i hope uh, I really hope this, this is a, a cool thing. People like it because I, I really loved working on it. Uh, and it feels like a, a cool new way to work in, uh, in node-based systems. So yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, I'd like to hear uh, back from people using it or what they think about it. Thanks a lot. So how do these work? I'll first do the state. The state is very simple. You only have this inputs parameter. That's where if you drag in a condition or a state, it'll get dropped. Uh, you can also reference another. So you have two of them. Then you have inputs active, which is just gonna look at all the inputs and also the ones connected like this and see if any of them is active. So it's a long expression, but it's, it's not magic. It's just looking if they're active. And then the last one is looking at if the parent parameter state is equal to the name. So you might ask, how does the state get changed? That happens inside. Uh, you don't need to look at these. This is for redrawing some lines for a bug, and this is recoloring to uh, the active color. You can see that this is listening to on any input active, which is this parameter here, which is listening to if any of them is active. Um, what it does is it goes to the parent's parent, so it goes to the, the container with the state parameter and changes that to the parent's name. So if any of the inputs are active, this becomes true and then the script inside will run and change the state to its name. Uh, and it does this on the last frame with this run command so that every logic can happen and at the end the state will change and the next frame everything will be new. So that makes it stable. Then we have these conditions. These conditions are essentially the same as a state. They also have this inputs uh, panel. They have uh, any input active and they have active, but they also have this condition met. And that's just seeing if the slider is one. Uh, and this only becomes active when any input is active, but also when the condition is met. An insider is just a lot of tops to visualize the, the nice arrows and uh, the thingies if you want. Uh, and these scripts are just handling these, um, also redrawing the lines if that's needed and uh, doing the sticky uh, behavior. So it's not really magic as well. It's very simple listening and then becoming active when, um, when the condition is met. And these uh, enhancers also are just, um, this is just a timer behavior and this is just a bottom behavior and you can create your own if you want here. Here's a template. Uh, you just output to these and then you can add your own behavior to make your code look cleaner. If you have, uh, for example, some image loading you want to uh, do, want to put away in a container which can be attached to a condition. And that's the magic of it. 